Once you think the tube is in place, inflate the cuff and listen for a leak around the cuff. The inflation should be just enough to stop the leak. Look at the chest wall, is it moving? Look at your end tidal CO2 monitor, are you getting CO2 back? Look at the tube, are you getting condensation of water vapor on the inside of the tube? You won't get that if you're in the esophagus because there's no uh, water vapor to come back from the stomach. So check for those things and then listen to the lungs. Uh, listen bilaterally, listen well out into the axillary area and make sure you've got air entry. This is a picture of three vaporizers that are commonly used in anesthesia. Uh, they are all uh, drug specific. They'll only manage one drug. They're calibrated for atmospheric pressure or whatever the, the atmospheric pressure is in the area in which you live. Uh, the temperature, they change their uh, delivery of vapor dependent upon the temperature in the room. So if it's in the middle of the summer and very hot, they adjust to that. Uh, they also uh, adjust to the flow that you set through them. And each is calibrated annually, as I mentioned. Uh, I know the one on the left is for isoflurane, and I know that because it's got a purple band on it, which is the isoflurane color. The one on the right is for sevoflurane, and I know that because it's got a yellow top, which is the sevoflurane color. And the one in the middle is for desflurane, and blue is not a particular color for any vapor. Uh, but I know that the uh, device on the lower left of the, of the vaporizer is the filling port for a desflurane vaporizer, and it doesn't exist on any other kind of vaporizer. So that's easy to work out. So what vapor are you going to use? So let's start with isoflurane. Set the inspired level of isoflurane at 1% to 2%. Uh, and then adjust according to the patient's hemodynamics. All of these vapors enhance muscle relaxation. Isoflurane itself is too pungent for inhalation induction. Common to get tachycardia with isoflurane, but you get no myocardial depression. It's slow onset of action, slow recovery, bit of a hangover. Desflurane is not as uh, potent as isoflurane, so you have to set it at a higher initial level, set it at five to 7%, and again, adjust to the patient's hemodynamics. It also enhances muscle relaxation, as all the vapors do. It also is too pungent for inhalation induction. Tachycardia and hypertension occur if concentration is raised quickly. If you don't do it quickly, if you only raise it a little bit at a time, you don't get tachycardia and hypertension. There's no myocardial depression. Uh, again, it's the fastest onset and recovery of any of the vapors, uh, but it requires a heated vaporizer, uh, which is a more expensive device and requires more careful calibration. And finally, sevoflurane, uh, set the inspired to 1 to 3%, and again, adjust to hemodynamics. It also enhances muscle relaxation. It's an excellent choice for inhalation induction uh, as, its as its smell is mild, and we talked about that in an earlier lecture. It produces little change in heart rate, no myocardial depression. It has an intermediate uh, speed of onset and recovery, fairly quick actually, but not as quick as desflurane. Uh, and it's been very popular in pediatric anesthesia because of its uh, property as an inhalation induction agent. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.